Have you ever wondered what would happen if Obanai became a demon? Well, for this to happen, let's say Obanai was the one sent to the Mugen train. Everything goes smoothly with stopping Enmu and saving the passengers. However, this is when Akaza shows up to the party. Akaza lunges at Obanai, throwing a powerful punch at him to get a sense of his strength. With his surprise, Obanai quickly dodges his attack using his snake-like movements. Akaza, at that moment, realizes that the man standing before him is a Hashira. Obanai, in that moment, uses his first form, Winding Serpent Slap. Akaza, sensing that the strength of the attack is isn't anything that will harm him. So he stands there, raising his hands to block the blow. The slash cuts both of his hands, but like we all know, it regenerates in a mere instant. In that next second, Obanai appears behind Akaza and quickly launches his second attack, second form. Venom Fangs of the Narrow Head. This is one of Obanai's fastest moves, however. Akaza was able to counter without a problem. This is where Akaza took an interest in him. As we know, Akaza's nature is to invite strong humans to become a demon like him. Just like what happened with Rengoku, Akaza invites Obanai to become a demon. However, However, Obanai declines the offer and continues to clash with him. Obanai at that moment understands the immense power difference between them, so he decides to use his full power. Obanai, as a snake user would, uses his third form, Coil Choke, trying to slither and catch Akaza and squeezing him into submission. Akaza is not an upper moon for no reason. He easily breaks free from the chokehold. Obanai, realizing that it wasn't going to work, shifts to his fourth form and cuts off Akaza's arm and leg, but as usual, it regenerates at a rapid pace. Akaza finally counters and hits Obanai with a barrage of punches. With the immense speed difference, Obanai was only able to block a few, causing him to get heavily injured. Unable to stand, Obanai holds himself up with his sword like a grandpa with his cane. Akaza once more asks Obanai to turn into a demon. As he was nearing defeat, instead of accepting Akaza's offer to become a demon, Obanai proposed a counter off. Obanai will provide information to the demons and act as a spy, and in return, he lived. This was a strategic move to avoid death and leverage his path, which had instilled in him a deep hatred for humans. But there's more to it. You see, Obanai and Mitsuri share a bond that that's really special. It's so deep that it even influenced his decision in that crucial moment. One of the reasons Obanai accepted the offer was because he couldn't bear the thought of never seeing Mitsuri again if he were to die. But the question is, will Akaza accept the offer? Well, there's a high chance. You see, having a spy in the Hashira, that's like hitting the jackpot for the demon. They know their plans and every move. Since Obanai's authorization as a Hashira, it gives him access to even the most classified information. This could totally swing things in favor of the demon. Now, have you ever thought about what would happen to the entire series if a Hashira was actually a traitor? It's not just a plot twist, it's a game change. It would add a whole new level of depth to every arc in the series, and some arcs would be impacted by this betrayal, leading to changes in the strategies worked by the demon and the overall direction of the story. So, what are those changes? Well, in the Entertainment District arc, Obanai is revealed to have leaked critical information to the demon. Specifically, Obanai disclosed that among the Demon Slayer Corps were girls who were connected to Tengen as his Y. They were acting as spies inside the district, and that's why they were captured by the Upper Moon Six sibling. Unfortunately for the demon, they did not anticipate the presence of Tanjiro and the others in the entertainment district. Obanai's intelligence was outdated. He mistakenly believed that Tanjiro and the others were still in recovery following the events of their harsh training. This might also be the reason why Obanai arrived late, just like in the original series. He purposely arrived when the battle was finished, so he didn't have to face one of the Hashiras to a death battle. And fortunately for the demon slayers, everything turned out exactly the same as in the original series. So even with the additional information from Obanai, Muzan still loses his Upper Moon Six. Moving on to the Swordsmith Village, Obanai informs the demons of the location of the Swordsmith Village by capturing and torturing a Demon Slayer member that knew the way. Now this makes perfect sense. Let's say that this was the only reason why Gyoko and Hantengu were able to reach the Swordsmith Village in the first place. Although the demons know the location of the village, they didn't know who was going to be there. And as we all know, Muchiro and Mitsuri were nearby, but Obanai himself didn't know. He also didn't know Tanjiro and Nezuko were going to arrive, which means that there aren't a lot of changes in this arc as well. Following the events at the Swordsmith Village, Muzan decides to have a conversation with Obanai because even though he did leak some info, their attacks were mostly useless. Muzan offers Obanai a choice, either to become a demon or to be executed. Obanai considers this proposition, but his decision is influenced by his previous encounter with Akaza. Obanai's deep-seated hatred for humans, which has been instilled in him due to past traumas and the suffering he has witnessed, leads him to stand firm in his conviction. So Obanai chooses to become a demon. As Obanai drinks Muzan's blood, an immense demonic pressure flows through his body, making a ripple in the infinity cap. Obanai once, the snake Hashira grows horns with dark raging aura, and next to him is Kabumaru, also growing in size with thicker skin. Now this is where speculation comes into play. What will Obanai's blood demon art look like? Well, to be close as the original story, he will mostly follow Kaigaku and Kokushibo's transformations, where he infuses his snake breathing technique with his blood demon art. There's a chance that he'll be like Yoko or Han Tengu, where he can summon giant snakes apart from his demon swordsmanship. With his huge power spike, Obanai would replace Yoko as the new upper moon 
5. Additionally, Nakame would be the new Upper Moon 4, with Kaigaku being the new Upper Moon 6. After Obanai's transformation, Muzan asked him to spill the beans on the location of Kagaya. Muzan knows that he is the one protecting Nezuko from getting captured. And as we all know, Nezuko is the key factor in making Muzan immortal. The demons immediately get to work. Muzan pays a visit to Kagaya, while the other demon slayers are sent to the Infinity Castle to face off against the remaining Upper Moons. Mostly the matchups and outcomes would remain unchanged. Shinobu would meet her end at the hands of Doma, only for Kanao and Inosuke to avenge her by defeating him. Tanjiro and Giyu would bring down Akaza, while the others would win over Kokushibo. However, there is one key difference. That's right, it's Rengoku. In this timeline, he was never sent to the Mugen Train, therefore was never killed by Akaza. So the only difference in this arc would be Mitsuri facing off against Nakame by herself. When arriving at the Infinity Castle, Rengoku encounters Obanai. Rengoku stands there with sadness in his eyes that he has to fight a fellow Hashira. Rengoku screams at Obanai, asking him why he would turn traitor. Obanai, with a tear coming from his eyes, says, uh, I'm sorry. The fight begins as Obanai summons his gigantic snake, Kabumaru. It then charges at Rengoku at full speed with sharp fang. Rengoku, with his immense speed, dodges the snake and quickly counters using his first form, unknowing fire cutting, splitting the snake into two. Just as Rengoku thought this was going to be an easy fight because back when they were Hashiras, Rengoku was known to be stronger than Obanai. However, he thought wrong. Kabumaru into two pieces regenerates both bodies. Now, standing before Rengoku are two deadly snakes. Once again, both snakes charge at Rengoku, but Rengoku quickly counters with his third form, blazing unit. Using this form, he was able to cut both snakes. However, like before, the snakes multiplied. A battle that was once Rengoku versus Obanai, and his snake has now turned into four. Rengoku is getting annoyed. However, Rengoku noticed something when beheading the two snakes. It is that they are getting slower and easier to cut. Obanai at this point in the battle has not moved an inch. The battle continues as the same thing happens all over again. Moments pass, and on the battlefield, there are hundreds of snakes charging at Rengoku. However, he uses his fourth form, Blooming Flame Undulation, which acts as a defense by stopping all snakes in their tracks. However, because there are so much snakes, one manages to slither past the breathing style's defense and bite Rengoku in the arm. Fortunately for Rengoku, it doesn't do much damage, but he quickly grabs it and throws it on the ground. Obanai finally walks up and decides takes things serious. Obanai pulls out his sword and charges at Rengoku. With his new profound speed, Obanai is able to move much faster like a snake, hunting his prey on the battle. Rengoku was able to block the attack, but is shocked by Obanai's immense power growth since becoming a demon. As they are on standstill with their swords, some of Obanai's snakes slither to Rengoku, biting him in different places. At this point, Rengoku is injured, so he pushes back from Obanai. Rengoku realizes that in order for him to continue this fight, he needs to clash with Obanai while constantly moving. And as he does, he was able to avoid attack from the other snake. However, because of the damage that he took earlier, and also the long dragged on battle from Obanai's snakes, Rengoku starts to slow down. He knows that if this battle continues any longer, he would lose. So he charges one strong attack in hopes to decapitate Obanai's head, resulting in the snakes also vanishing. The next instant, he uses his ninth form, Rengoku, directly at Obanai's neck. Just in the nick of time, Obanai blocks the attack using one of his new demon abilities, which is surrounding his sword with layers of snake skin, causing a thick layer that is impossible to penetrate. Rengoku's sword breaks in half, and Rengoku is kneeling on the floor from exhaustion and injury. The next instant, Obanai stabs Rengoku's chest, causing his death. Sorry, Rengoku fans, he dies in this timeline too, but for good reason! As this whole battle was unfolding, all other battles was happening simultaneously. This includes Mitsuri facing off against Nakame. It took a little longer since Obanai wasn't there to help, but she was able to defeat Nakame. Without sustaining much injuries, Mitsuri roams around the Infinity Castle to see if the other Hashiras need any assistance. That is where she stumbles across a demon Obanai, running his sword through Rengoku. Keep in mind that Rengoku was also Mitsuri's teacher. Mitsuri shocked and angered that once her closest friend killing her mentor, Mitsuri pulls out her sword and slashes it at Obanai from a distance, causing him to step back. At that moment, Obanai is shocked, realizing that Mitsuri, the girl that he loves, is standing before him. Mitsuri cries as he holds a lifeless Rengoku on her arm. As we know from the the original series, these two share a deep bond of love. In the main timeline when they died, they hugged each other so tight that they had to be buried together. But in this timeline, they find themselves in a battle against each other. Their confrontation is emotionally charged, with Mitsuri pleading with Obanai, tears streaming down her face as she recalls their shared promises. This emotional appeal triggers Obanai's memories of the precious moments he shared with Mitsuri, and slowly, his humanity starts to seep in. Despite Obanai's transformation into a demon, he finds himself hesitating. The echoes of Mitsuri's words and their their love for emotion are what hold him back. After all the screams and sorrows, Mitsuri pushes forward and strikes Obanai. With all the guilt and regret that Obanai has from his decisions to turn into a demon, he just stands there. He looks up at Mitsuri and smiles just as she finishes her attack, decapitating his head. Mitsuri's tears start flowing as they share their first and last I love you's before Obanai disintegrates into dust. Now this is where the ending of the story
story changes entirely from the original timeline. As we know, Kokushiba was defeated by Mitsuri, Giyome, and Saname. Kaigaku was one shot by Zenitsu. Doma was poisoned by Shinobu and eventually defeated by Inosuke and Ka now. The only one remaining is the Demon King himself, Muzan. We have to remember that Obanai played a huge part in stopping Muzan in the original timeline. Therefore, the ending would be drastically different. Every Demon Slayer remaining will eventually face off against Muzan. They try their best to stall Muzan off as long as possible. However, it is very difficult without Obanai. Most of the Hashiras eventually die, only leaving a few Demon Slayers. However, in this timeline, their only hope is Tanjiro turning into a demon earlier in the battle. And just as in the original story, Tanjiro will lose control once turning into a demon. The surviving Demon Slayers run to safety, leaving Tanjiro to take care of the rest while watching from a distance. Demon King Tanjiro and Muzan are left in a battlefield, staring down one another. Once a battle where it was every Demon Slayer versus the Demon King has turned into demon versus demon, Tanjiro lunges at Muzan like a wild animal hunting his prey. The two go back and forth exchanging blow after blow. However, there is one big difference in their ability. Demon King Tanjiro is able to withstand the sun. However, Muzan cannot. Muzan notices the sun about to rise, so he uses his whip to damage the surrounding area, creating a smoke. Just as Muzan was about to run into hiding, Demon Tanjiro leaps on top of Muzan, leaving him incapacitated. The sunlight rises, hitting both of them with a beam of light. Muzan disintegrates into dust, leaving a Demon Tanjiro standing. The surviving Demon Slayers watch in shock and relief as Muzan turns to dust under the sunlight. However, their joy is short-lived as they realize the consequences of Tanjiro becoming a demon. Witnessing Nezuko, Tanjiro abruptly lunges at her, toppling her over as he assumes a four-legged dance. His ferocious whips and demonic gaze portray a fierce determination to protect Nezuko at any cost. Nezuko lies there terrified as she observes her brother's unsettling transformation, a mirror image of her past self. The remaining demon slayers are left astounded with the unexpected turn of events and wondering how to stop Tanjiro's rampage. Amid the chaos, Kano holds the crucial antidote, but requires a strategic opening to inject it. The remaining demon slayers fend off Tanjiro's whips, doing their best against the deadly assault in their current condition. In a sudden twist, demon Tanjiro vanishes, reappearing behind Giyu with a speed that catches everyone off guard. Despite Giyu's best attempt to react, Tanjiro's razor-sharp claws pierce through him, leaving him a donut. The grim fate that befalls Giyu is repeated among the other demon slayers in the next moments, leaving behind a pile of lifeless bodies. In the aftermath, the only people left standing are demon king Tanjiro and the frightened Nezuko. Tanjiro lets out a demonic scream, and due to exhaustion, collapses into a ton. The battlefield, once bustling with the hearts of demon slayers, is now silent and left with the weight of loss. The remnants of the demon slayer cores lay defeated, leaving only the chilling echoes of Tanjiro's transformation lingering in the air. Be sure to smash the subscribe button, share, and click the notification bell for more videos like this one.